Hello and welcome back to the NBA DFS Slate Breakdown for Tuesday, February 13th. We got a six game slate to go over and we're going to be breaking it down position by position here. But before we do it, I want to let you know about those promo codes right down there. We got uh, Parlay Play, Sleeper, Underdog, Chalkboard, all of them you can get up to one month free of Line Star. And all you got to do is deposit 10 bucks and be a new customer to one of them. Now, each one has its own set of criteria, but once you hit it all, make sure you fill out this form here and we can get your uh, uh, promo one month free locked in. Now, before we, uh, let's get into it. All right. Six games. Highest game total of the night is the Sacramento versus Philly game. It is also a late game. We have three late games on the slate, three early games. All three early games are fairly low scoring. The two late games, or two of the late games, are the highest ones on the slate. Now, at point guard, highest owned, De'Aaron Fox. 26%. He's obviously in a great spot versus uh, the Suns. Point guard versus the Suns is something we talked about a lot here. One thing I will say with that, though, they have started getting a little bit better. So over the last 20 games, on average, you know, they add about 0.1 fantasy point per minute to the point guard. Uh, but over the last 10, it's 0.05. And you bring that to uh, the last five, and it's even a little bit better than that. So... They have been getting a little bit better. They still aren't very great till point guard. Uh, De'Aaron Fox's price has came down a little bit, and I'm intrigued to go there. It is still somebody, I think, that's going to be getting 36 minutes a game in tough contested games, which this is a tough contested game. His minutes have been all over the place lately, but more or less, he's played 35.3 over the last 20. We have not projected at 35 minutes. Thinks it makes sense to go there. Bradley Beal just on the other side. Look, between Beal, Booker, Durant, one of them's going off. They always do. And Beal's the cheapest of those three. So I understand why people are going here. And I don't mind it whatsoever. He has the ability to do it. It's just that he needs more of those ceiling games or really needs to get it going to pay off his uh, lofty salary. Mike Conley is next. I got to love hate with Mike Conley. I do like him as a player. 0.91 fantasy point per minute guy on uh, over the last 20. He's in a very good spot. My issue is the minutes. He's projected 29 minutes. He has played 28.5 over his last 20 starts. And it just limits his upside a little bit. He needs to play very, very well to give you much of a ceiling. And even that, you know, pretty much high 30s is a ceiling. Very occasionally he'll get into the 40s. Uh, so I do worry a little bit about a ceiling, but it is a great spot. Unfortunately, though, only a 214 total. So a little hard to get there, but I understand why people going, are going there. It is a very, very good matchup. I just worry about the ceiling a little bit. All right, some pivots. Damien Lillard. Uh, Lillard only played 23 minutes last night because of a blowout. He did really well in those 23 minutes, but it was only 23 minutes. One thing that I did talk about is with Doc Rivers, he's been playing a little bit more minutes in a close game. I think he's going to get 37, 38 minutes a game with how they're, how they've been doing their minutes. In that case, 8.9 K is probably just a little bit too cheap for him. He should probably be mid nines. Uh, and you know, he's a guy that can get 50 with Giannis on the court. He can get 60 still. He can take over a game. So I am intrigued to go to uh, Dame. I do think uh, he's still priced a little low, but that's probably going to co come up pretty quick. And we got a complete punt here. 5,100, Cole Anthony. Now this is my issue with Anthony. Minutes, last five, 17 minutes a game. Over the last 20, 20 minutes a game. But last time out, he played 30. So he is back to that role where he is just a total punt coming off the bench. He can get very, very hot. He can play very well. He can be, you know, 1.1, 1 1.2 fantasy per minute guy coming off the bench. 
but you just don't know when that's going to be. It's kind of Malik Monk-ish, but even more variance in his minutes. Because you know Monk is going to play 24 to 28, maybe 30 if he really gets it going. But uh, Cole Anthony can literally play 15 or he can play 30. So it is a punt play. Uh, having him play those extra minutes and not playing super good last game has me a little bit intrigued uh, to go his way. Maybe he gets into that 22-24 minute kind of range regularly and with that he could play off uh, 5.1 if he gets it going but that's totally pump play just super low owned uh tr not gonna try and have too much of that one and on to point guard at DraftKings, tyler hero malik monk and De'Aaron fox uh malik monk on dk is too cheap he's 1.16 fantasy per minute guy and when he plays well, he has a huge ceiling, 40, 50 point ceiling, 5.8K makes a lot of sense to go there. I understand why everybody's there. And in these tougher games, it's when he tends to play a little bit more minutes. So I understand why people are going there. Don't mind it. Tyler Hero, there's no Jimmy Butler, no Terry Rozier. He's going to go back to the point guard spot and play a ton of minutes. And 6.9K, he has big ceilings. So totally get why you want to go there matchup wise we got De'Aaron Fox uh Drew Holiday Cade Cunningham Cade Cunningham is a little interesting at 7.8k on DK I am intrigued uh Drew 6.6 or 6.2k for a guy that's been living mid 30s makes some sense to go there as well on to shooting guard on FanDuel, Duncan Robinson, Bradley Beal, D'Angelo Russell, Jalen Brown, Tyler Hero, all coming in fairly high owned here. Uh, Robinson's only 5K. He played 33 minutes last game. That was without Jimmy Butler as well, I believe. And this game will also be without uh, Jimmy B. But Terry Rozier is also out. I think you can lock him in for 30 minutes. Uh, might be a little plus on top of that, but they really, really will need his offense in this spot to try and keep up with the scoring of the Bucks. It's a pace up spot. Don't mind going there. Uh, I do wish his ownership was a little bit lower, though. I don't think it is. The projections are very safe for him because it's really he's hitting his shot or is not, and his minutes could be all over the place. Um, so he may be going a little bit too high owned here, but I do like him. Bradley Beal, D'Angelo Russell. Uh, we do got to bring up the fact that the Lakers signed Spencer Dinwiddie. Not sure how many minutes he's going to play, but he's a point guard also, so it could eat into some of Russell's minutes. Russell's been playing a lot of minutes lately, uh, but he's gone through times where he only plays 30, 32 minutes. I don't think they want to play him this many minutes. I think it's just they kind of have to, and now they might not have to. So that is my worry there. Uh, pivots, Osar Thompson. I really like this kid. I loved him in the beginning of the year when he was playing really well. He is back to starting, and 5.9K is a little too cheap for me. He's 0.94 uh, fantasy point per minute as a starter, and he's starting again. Lakers aren't great versus uh, small forward. I I like going there. Next, Grayson Allen. Uh, Grayson Allen's been playing pretty well. 0.77 fantasy point per minute guy uh, versus the Kings, who they definitely have a weakness against wings that can shoot, and Grayson Allen can definitely do that. We've also seen him get some pretty nice ceiling games. So at 5.8K, a guy that can get you 40 occasionally, very occasionally. I don't mind going there at low ownership. And on to shooting guard on DraftKings, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, Malik Monk, all of which we have talked about. And then Derek White, Duncan Robinson, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Herter all have pretty good matchups in that shooting guard spot. I uh, I mean you could do worse going with any of them so I I don't mind doing it. Kevin Herter I am intrigued by always just because 
he does have that huge ceiling if he gets it going. His issue is the minutes aren't consistent, so he does make a good uh, GPP play at lower ownership. Small forward on FanDuel, Duncan Robinson, Caleb Martin, Jay Crowder, Jaden McDaniels, Jonathan Isaac, Zaylin Brown, all high owned. I got to bring up uh, Jonathan Isaac. His price is far, finally started creeping up, but he played 25 minutes the other night. I have talked about it a couple times. This guy starts getting more minutes. He's going to have a big game. That finally came. He put up 33 on versus the Bulls, played 25 minutes. And if he gets 25 minutes again, he's going to look interesting. 1.06 fantasy per minute guy. He is a solid, solid player. He's just been dealing with injuries for a while. Seems like he's starting to finally get a little healthier. Hopefully, this 25-minute thing starts to be a little bit more of the norm. Uh, but definitely interesting to go there. Some uh, uh, Caleb Martin, look, there's no Butler, so he makes sense. Jay Crowder, there's no Middleton, so he makes sense. Jaden McDaniels, he's just cheap and going to play minutes, so I understand why you want to go there. The issue here is, you know, 30 is his ceiling. Um, don't mind it f at 4.4K, but, you know, anything above 25 for him is hard, and that's kind of what you need. So, uh, pivot-wise... Dorian Finney-Smith, he came back from injury, played 20 minutes. They don't have Spencer Denwitty now. Uh, Cam Johnson is out. I think there is some room for him to play a couple extra minutes. And in this game, he actually was probably on pace to play more of uh, 25, 26 minutes, but it was a blowout. So I don't hate going to uh, DFS. I would make sure he's starting, though. Because I, if he's not starting, his minutes are so volatile. I just don't want anything to do with it. Uh, Asar Thompson, Matisse Thibel started the last three games, played you know, thirty-eight to twenty-nine minutes, depending on the game. We haven't projected twenty-five. Uh, Portland is still dealing with some injuries. If he's starting, he's interesting because those minutes are going to be there. If he's not starting, I do worry because he's only averaging twenty. Point nine minutes per game over his last 20 games coming off the bench but when he starts he generally gets 28 plus minutes and that makes him interesting at his price uh grayson allen lebron james uh, i think we're in an interesting spot for lebron uh my only issue is the fact that you know they could just totally blow out the pistons but what we've seen from the Lakers is they play down or up to their competition. So I would expect the Pistons to be in this game for most of most of the game. But look, he's in a good spot. He averages right around 1.4, 1.35 fantasy point per minute. Then uh, you add in the good matchup and it starts to make a little sense to want to go with good old LBJ. Uh my only issue with LeBron is that he's very consistent around 50. He doesn't have many blow up games where he gets into 60, 60 plus, And that's really what we are need, needing here. But if it's a close game, Pistons stay into it. I think uh, it makes some sense to have some correlation with, with LeBron having somebody on the other side, uh, because that's probably how LeBron really does get there. Small forward on DK, Duncan Robinson, Jason Tatum, Jaime Yaquez. 4.5K is just way too cheap for this man. Uh, he started last game, played 29 minutes. As a starter, 0.84 fantasy points per minute this season. We've seen highs of 50. He can definitely get it going. Uh, I like the kid a lot and don't mind going there whatsoever, even at higher ownership. Uh, Jason Tatum. He can always do it. He's been playing super well, and his price came down from uh, 9.7, 9.8K. Don't mind if I do on DK. Getting over two matchups. LeBron James, the very top. Asar Thompson, right there as well. Grayson Allen. Uh, 
Jeremy Grant. One thing I do got to say about Grant is I think he's going to play a lot of minutes tonight. Played 45 and 41 in his last two. He uh, definitely could play a ton of minutes again in this situation, which it's a decent spot. Makes some sense to want to go there. Power forward on FanDuel, Caleb Martin, Jay Crowder, Jaden McDaniels, Jonathan Isaac, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, all showing up around there. Uh, KD is pretty interesting to me in this spot, but like I said, Booker, KD, Beal, one of them is going to go off. Very, very hard to figure out which one of those three go off. Uh, Jason Tatum, talked about him just now, obviously in a good spot. 10.2 isn't too much. And everybody else we talked about, I am intrigued at Cat because uh, Carl Anthony Towns, 8.2K versus the Trailblazers, who aren't great versus power forward. And Cat is a guy that's been living in that mid 40s and occasionally will show us that 50, 60, and 8.2K. He's just priced a little bit too cheap to be low owned and give us that, uh, you know, more ceiling type plays for an 8.2. K salary that we need. So I, I am definitely intrigued in some cat. And on to DraftKings, we got Jonathan Isaac, Tatum, Yaquez, Simone, Fonticino, uh, Keegan Murray. Uh, I got to bring up Simone here. We're not too sure what's going on here. He played 32 minutes off the bench. Uh, that is starter minutes. I don't know if he's going to play that again. I don't know what Detroit's thinking about his rotations, but something to definitely take notice of we have him at 28.5 minutes if he's ends up starting you know you can definitely lock him in for that 32 probably but uh definitely intrigued by his minutes and usage at his dk price and everybody else we have talked about so matchup tool Rui hachamari kevin durant Giannis do have to say that Giannis uh, was definitely on his game last night in Milwaukee as a whole playing on a back-to-back should probably take notice of that even though they didn't have to play that many minutes because they absolutely blew out Denver Uh, but that's three games in a row that Giannis has not had to play very much minutes because they're either getting blown out or they're blowing out so big difference from earlier in the season where they were winning games but they were all close games. Now, uh, lately, they've had some blowouts. So, just something to take notice. But Giannis always is in play. And on to center spot. We got Bam out of bio. Luke Cornett. Uh, Christoph Porzingis is questionable. And makes a little sense to want to go to Cornett if uh, Porzingis doesn't play. However, there's also Horford there. So, I don't love the... Uh, Cornette one, but he's coming in higher on. Bam. Uh, there's no Jimmy Butler, so he definitely makes a lot more sense. And some pivots that I like. Julian Duran versus the Lakers. Uh, he just has a huge ceiling at 7.8K. Super active big. Playing a lot of minutes. We have him at 33 minutes. He can easily get over that as he's played 35 to 37 uh, in the last three. And been playing very well in the last three. Now he gets the Lakers. Four-star alert score. Don't mind if I do. Wendell Carter Jr., only 5.6K. Pretty interesting for a guy that, you know, just a couple weeks ago was in the mid-30s consistently. Had a ceiling of 45. OKC isn't super good versus center. So I could see a path to him doing well at low ownership. So I'm intrigued there. Rudy Gobert. Portland just sucks versus center. Literally the last in the league in fantasy scoring versus the center. Now, I think they are a little bit better with Aiton back, but not a whole lot. Uh, so I definitely don't mind going to Gobert, who's been playing extremely well over the last month. Bunch of 40-pointers, couple 50s, living in the mid-30s. Don't mind going to uh, Gobert. The one thing I will say is I don't really want to play Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns together. I think it's going to be one of the two really get it going and likely not both. Uh, and then Cats right after who we have talked about on to center spot at DraftKings. Jonathan Isaac, DeMontis Sabonis, Bam Matabayo. All of them make a little sense. I do got to say 3.4K is too cheap for Isaac on uh, DK. 
if he plays 25 minutes again, he crushes that uh, salary. Now, if he's down to 20, that's a different story. So the only way he's going to have the real ceiling is if he plays that 23, 24, 25 minute range. Uh, so you're just betting on that one. But 3.4K is so cheap for him. Now, matchup tool wise, we got Rudy Gobert, Yusuf Nurkic, Bam Adebayo, Wendell Carter Jr., Holmgren, Duran, all pretty interesting in this spot. So that'll do it for us today. Good luck today, guys. Let's win some money. Be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be the last show of the week for the DFS. Uh, as Thursday, I believe, is only three games. And then it's NBA All-Star break. I, uh, for one, am kind of looking forward to it lately. I feel like a lot of these games have been just total blowouts. And a little harder to kind of handicap what's going on later. But uh, after the break, it all just gets a little more serious, too. Teams are really fighting for their playoff stuff. It's the best time for basketball over the next couple months. That'll do it, guys. Have a good one. Good luck. Let's win some money.